there is still another 40 days of prayer and fasting. So it's not too late if someone wanted to join and uh, you want to be part of this uh, prayer, you're very much welcome. And I know God is going to bless you because 40 really is a number of dominion and a, a prayer of assignment. So we're wanting God to fulfill his assignment in our lives, in our church, in our family. Why not in whatever we're involved in? Glory to God. So we are going to go straight in our Bible study tonight. Remember, we've been talking about 30 operations of faith. And uh, we, we are breaking each one of them. I believe last week we spoke about faith stands. Faith stands. So if a man, a woman of faith, you are called to stand. Tonight, I want us to talk about faith believes, hopes, and endures. Faith believes, faith hopes, and faith endures. So we are going to go in the book of um, 1 Corinthians. We'll be seeing that we're going to be kind of picking up from where we left off and getting some of the scripture we've already read in the past so that we are not too far disconnected from uh, what we are sharing. First Corinthians chapter 13, verse 7. The Bible says, Love bears all things. Believe believes all things. Hopes all things. Endures all things. Now remember, we're talking about faith. Faith believes all things. Hopes all things. Endures all things. You know this year we read the scripture talk in first Corinthians chapter 13 is talking about love. And the reason we are looking at love because there is a strong connection and a relationship between love and faith. In Galatians chapter 5 verse 6 the Bible says this for in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor a circumcision avails anything, but faith working through love. See, there's a relationship. The Bible says faith works through love. Another word, without faith, without love, faith can never have expression. Without love, faith is important. Without love, faith is crippled. Now, remember, we are called to live by faith. The Bible says the judge shall live by faith. And it is not a walk of faith that we are living in victory that we defeat the devil, that we are able to enjoy the promise that God has given unto us. And the devil also and demons, they understand that. The Bible says, for instance, First John 5 verse 4, Whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. So we see that when you have faith, you can have victory over the world. And the Bible says, without faith, Hebrews 11, verse 6, without faith, it is impossible to please God. For you who comes to God must believe that God is and is the rewarder of those who dil diligently seek Him. So you can never please God and you never walk in divine reward without faith. So if we are going to please God, we need to do it by faith. And it's faith now that ushers us or introduces us in the life of the supernatural, the life of wonders, the life that is unlimited. Because Jesus said, if you can believe, all things are possible.
every human being. If you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. If you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. So it is faith that ushers us in the life of possibilities. It ushers in the life whereby we are not controlled, we are not limited by the circumstances of life. But whatever we desire from God is delivered to us on the plate of faith. Even if we want to walk in victory, the Bible says, for instance, First Peter chapter 5, verse 8, he said that our adversary, the devil, walks around as a roaring lion. But how do you, the Bible then continue by saying, resist him in faith. How do you have victory over the devil? He is by resisting him in faith. So that the devil knows, as long as a believer, as long as a man or a woman, who is a child of God, is walking by faith, he will never have a chance. He will never have uh, a way of defeating that person. First of all, because faith is not something you acquire, it's not something you work for. The devil knows his defeat is non-negotiable. Why? Because you, you defeat the devil by faith, you overcome by faith, and that faith God gave it to us as a gift. So don't swear to, to have faith. You don't fight to have faith. The Bible says in Romans chapter 12, verse 3, we spoke about this in the past, that God has given us a measure of faith, the measure of faith. And this measure is the same measure Jesus had, is the same measure the disciples had, is the same measure the early fathers, all of us we had the same measure of faith. In fact, when we are, we are, we were saved, God has to give us the gift called faith so that we can be able to respond to Him. Even the faith you used to say yes to Jesus, it was not your faith. It was a gift that God gave to you. I believe in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 where the Bible says we are, we are saved by grace through faith. And that is not of ourselves, is the gift of God, lest we should boast. So, Faith is a gift God has given us. And faith is what ushers us and brings us a life of victory. And the devil understands that. So if the devil now wants to hinder us and demons want to fight us, what they do, they affect our love walk. You see? Because faith works through love. It means that if you, you are affected in your love, your, your faith become incapacitated. Your faith become, becomes impotent. Your faith will never produce fruit. That's why you find sometimes going around and wondering, oh, you know, why my faith is not producing? I'm under attack. The attack is not in your faith. The attack is in your love work. That's why what we need to be looking at and really every day, uh, making personal assessment and introspection is always looking at how am I walking before God as far as love is concerned. The, the devil bring things into our lives to, to hurt us, disappoint us, to bring us a place of anger, frustration, a place of bitterness, a place of confusion, because the devil knows if you are faith in the area of love, then you don't have faith. Your faith is already corrupted. And when your faith is corrupted, you can never walk in victory. And then you just become the devil's dormant. Glory to God. So I want us to understand that if we are going to walk by faith and we are going to do things with God by faith, we have to be men and women are walking in love. Let's just look at something very quickly. Uh, because I know today we are living in the world by, whereby everything is just... Uh, everything, I mean, whatever you want to talk about, you must put them in proper perspective. They must be properly defined. Because today when you talk about love, people think about love can be uh, anything. But look what the Bible says when it comes to love. I mean, in First Corinthians chapter 13, we all call, we call this one uh, a love, a love chapter. Verse 4 to 7. The Bible says love suffers long, love is kind, love does not envy, that love does not parade itself. Love does not puff up. 
Love does not behave rudely. Love does not seek its own. Love does not get provoked. It does not think evil. It does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. So that is the Bible life. So that's why the devil's after to bring on a place where we become rude, mean, impatient, and we are out of whack, like we say. And when you come to that place, your faith is already affected. And when you become your faith is affected, you become prey and you become a defeated child of God with no testimony. Who want to have a child of God? You have no testimony. I mean, you've been working with God for a while now. We don't have anything tangible you can show. Is a result. It's a proof. You know, I went to the promised land. Moses, this is the pomegranate. These are the figs. These are the stuff I got from, from the promised land. So God wants us to produce fruit. But for us to come to that place, we have to walk in love so that our faith can produce results. So remember, we're talking about faith believes all things. What I want us to understand, people of God, God wants us to believe Him in anything. So whatever God has promised us in the Word, as men and women of faith, we are called to believe God. So in other words, when we walk with God by faith, we, with God, we enter the world of possibilities. Regardless of what the circumstances can tell us, or regardless of what people are saying, regardless of what, uh, life trying to impose on us, when you are a man and a woman of faith, you believe all things God says. So if God says, you know, He is a healer, and you go to the doctor and the doctor says, you know what, this sickness is incurable. You believe what God says. Why? Because faith believes all things God says. When they say, you know, you can never be able to make it because of any particular situation, you say, no, I believe I can make it. Why? Because, because God has promised me such and such. So what I'm trying to tell us, when you are, you are walking by faith, you believe in all possibilities. Regardless of what society, culture, relationship, experiences, education, or whatever it's trying to impose to you, you always believe what God says, regardless of circumstances. And you come to the place of believing in God because you, 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 you enter into a relationship with His Word. And you know what the provision God has made in His Word, and you take that provision and that provision becomes, therefore, the standard of your life. It means that regardless of the challenge of life, you embrace God's position in regard to your circumstance. Like I was saying, you can go, and there are a lot of things that will come in this life. Maybe it might be hard, it might be impossible, but you say, no, God say, uh, by his straps I was healed. Therefore, because God says it, I just believe it. You just embrace whatever God says. If God says, you know, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you, and you know in your family nobody has, has ever uh, accomplished anything. So you, you won't embrace what people are saying. You embrace what God is saying. So the man and the woman of faith, he believes all things. He believes everything God says. And sometimes what God says, and while God promised, it can, it seems like it's out of this world because God is out of this world. God is beyond, uh, what we know, beyond what we, 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 we can encounter in our lives. So the first thing I want us to understand is that faith believes all things. Secondly, faith hopes all things. Faith hopes in all things. Faith hopes all things. Faith Hopes all things. So when you are a man or a woman of faith, you hope all things. And the reason you you have a hope, so hope has to do with tomorrow or the future. So when you walk by faith, the reason you you have a hopes because you know God is not only the God of the present, He's also the God of the future. And that particular God you're in a relationship with, he has made wonderful promises concerning your life. And your, your hope now 
is rooted in your faith today. Your hope for tomorrow is rooted in your faith today. Remember, hope is for the future and faith is for today. Now, the reason you believe God that your tomorrow will be better than today because you believe that God you are in a relationship with today is the God going to sustain you today, tomorrow, for the rest of your life. For instance, I have one scripture for you in the book of Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11. For I know the thought that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. So God has a future for you. God has a future for me. Now you might say, but Apostle, my future, I don't know what my future will be like. Oh, God is just telling you that I have a good future for you. I have a, a great future for your family. I have a great future for your children. I have a great future for your husband. I have a great future for, for your... You might say like, you know, I don't feel like it. I don't know how it's going to happen. It's not about what you feel. It's not about your own personal possibilities. Remember your Hope for tomorrow is rooted in your faith today. It's because you believe God today that you know your future is going to be great. You know, you know what God says, has uh, wonderful thoughts for me, he has a wonderful future for me. I believe God and I know what my circumstances are imposing on me. I just know tomorrow is going to be greater than today. And if it's apostle, do you really know? Well, if I want to look at my present, maybe my current circumstances, I might have all the doubt to, all the reason to doubt. I might have all the reason to say, I don't know how it's going to happen. But I'm not banking. As you walk by faith, you don't bank on your own ability. You depend on the faithfulness of God. You depend on the integrity of God. Because you say, do you know the one who's giving you this promise? is not a man. God does not lie. So if he said it, he means it. And he has the power to carry out on his promises. So you depend on the promise of God. Therefore, as a man, a woman of faith, not only you you believe all things, you also hope all things. Whatever you know God says about you in his word, you know it is a possibility and you just trust that it, there can be a change in my, my life. There can be a change, you know. And one of the things I noticed, the reason we, we give up on our, in our, on our lives, you know, you give up on yourself, give up, give up on your, maybe businesses or give up on your career, give up in your family. The reason we do that is because we, we stop focusing on God and we start focusing on ourselves. And every time you start focusing on yourself, there will always be a reason to doubt, a reason to think it will never happen, a reason to think it's not a possibility. But I want you to know, when we begin to focus on God, then we know our future is bright. Our future is going to be great. Why? Because the God of today is also the God of tomorrow. Remember, it's the Alpha and the Omega. It's the Alpha and every letter in between is also the Omega. So I want you to know that faith or hopes all things. Go to God. And lastly, faith endures all things. Faith does what? Faith endures all things. Faith endures all things. Faith endures all things. You know, when you give your life to Jesus, or you receive a word from God, even while I'm sp speaking to you right now. The word always finds you in a particular situation. While I'm speaking to you, probably maybe you are, you are looking for a job. And, uh, some people, while, I, while I'm speaking to you, you just lost your job. Uh, some people, while I'm speaking, maybe you had, uh, a negative doctor's report. Some people, when I'm speaking to you, you are going through a hard time in your marriage. Some people, when I'm speaking, you are, you have a problem with your, your boss or in your business, with your children, your husband, your wife. I mean, you're just going through something. So every time you receive the word of God, the word of God always finds you in a, in a particular situation. 
And sometimes, what I know is you find the word of God, you find you in a situation that's, that's contrary to the way that you are receiving. And sometimes it's very even difficult to believe what God is, God is saying based on your situation. But I want us to understand, I want us to read one scripture really that really spoke to me. The Bible says the first Thessalonians chapter one verse six. Apostle Paul said the Thessalonians, and you became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with the joy of the Holy Spirit. I want you to know this. They received the word with, with much affliction. The word sometimes we find in a place of, as I'm saying it, of hardship. You are in a tight place. In a hard, in a hard place. That's where, that's where faith endures. Regardless of the situation, you still believe all things. You still hope all things. You still endure all things. You see. Because sometimes when the word finds you, then you begin, you're trying to make sense of the prophetic word you received and try also to make sense of your current situation. And it seems like they are not marrying themselves together. You say, well, this is what the word says. But when I look at my situation, they don't match. It seems like it's day, day and night. It's the black and white. I don't know God. You see? That's where you endure because you believe your hope until you see the manifestation of the promise of God. Because most of the time we give up too early. This reminds me of Hebrew chapter 6 verse 12. You know, Hebrew chapter 6 verse 12, the Bible says, Imitate those who through faith and patience obtain the promises. So it, it takes patience. Sometimes you need to endure Understand and keep on believing until you see the goodness of God. You know that this reminds me of, think about our father Abraham. When the word of God came to our father Abraham, our mother Sarah was barren. Now this barrenness is not like the, it was confirmed because the Bible, the barrenness, I mean, in this particular couple, they knew the problem was Sarah. Sarah was barren. So the word found them in the place of barrenness. But guess what? They see believed, they see hoped, and they endured until there was manifestation. So this is what I'm trying to tell us. I don't know what your situation, but you still have to believe all things, hope all things God said, and endure in that particular situation. And guess what? As they endured, sure enough, they walked in the manifestation of what God promised. This also reminds me of uh, another person in the Bible. Uh, this in the New Testament, Jairus. You know Jairus, when he met with Jesus, you know what happened? His daughter was dead. And people were saying, oh, leave Jesus alone, your daughter. But guess what? He still believes, believed, he hoped, and endured the ridicule. What people are saying, you're out of your mind. Your daughter is dead. You go to pick up this rabbi. What is he going to do? You know, he still believed. And guess what? His daughter came back to life. So what I'm saying, the word going to find you in a particular posture, particular position. But you still have to believe God, regardless of the posture. This reminds me also of Mary, the mother of Jesus. When the word came to her, you know what happened? She was virgin, betrothed, fiancé. And then the word came and said, you know what? You're going to be with child. She said, how would this happen? I don't know any man. He said, no. I mean, she just believed. So the word always finds you in a particular situation, particular circumstance. And some of us, while I'm speaking right now, I suppose you don't even know what you're talking about because I'm in a very tight, tight, tight place financially. But while you're in that situation, just believe, or hope, and endure until you see manifestation. Glory to God. And then this really reminds me of what his name. Mary, the sister of Lazarus. In John 11. I mean, when the word came to Mary... 
and martyr, their, their brother Lazarus was already dead. You see? So what I'm talking to you, I'm wondering, I wonder what situation you find yourself in. Because some situation you don't even know if you have the ability to believe. Now remember, you know trying to get faith, you already have faith. It's a gift God has given unto you. Now if you didn't, you didn't really uh, get that, you need to read, uh, watch some of the things I've been talking about in the past. On faith. Her brother was already dead. I mean, it's when you are living, you are, you are, you are stuck with a situation that beyond any human resolution, human solution, I mean, is beyond any effort or beyond answer, beyond what anyone can ever be able to handle. That's what they were dealing with. Their brother was already dead. But Jesus came in the particular situation. You know, initially what Jesus was telling them, hey, your brother is dead, but keep on believing, keep on hoping, and keep on enduring. And when we, we believe, we hope, and the next thing before you know it, we begin to step into manifestation. So I want us to know these things, people of God, that when we walk by faith, we have to be men and women we are willing to believe all things that God has promised. You don't only pick up the good one or you all think God has promised. We, we, we have hope in everything God has said. And we endure in spite of our circumstances. Glory to God. Now I want us to look at very quickly the three responses to the word of faith. What do you do when you receive the word? The first response to the word of faith or to, to the word is that when we receive the word, we have first of all to meditate on the word and to speak the word. To meditate on the word and to speak the word. In uh, Jeremiah chapter 15 verse 16, the Bible says this. Your words were found and I ate them. And your word was to me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. For I'm called by your name, O Lord God of hosts. So I want you to know that Jeremiah said, I found your word and I ate them. So what is he saying? I was reading your word and meditating on the word. And one of the things I notice most of the time is that we read the word, but we don't meditate on the word. Meditating on the word simple means you take the word, you begin to think about a word throughout the day. You think if you are working, some people say, oh, you, you saying that, how can I be working? I'm busy working. I'm meditating on the word. Do you know that you can be at work or you can be driving and you are worrying at the same time? <laughs> you can be working and you are worrying at the same time. Think, oh my God, that bill. No, oh my God, what am I going to do? And yeah, you're working, but you are in worry. It's the same way. We can discipline ourselves in a such a way that I'm working, but I'm still meditating on this particular word. You know, God's still going to supply all my need. I'm going to riches and glory. Father, I believe that you say, you know, we should shout for joy and say continually, let the Lord be magnified, has pleasure in the prosperity of servants. So you are saying all these words while you are driving, while you are talking, while you are working. You see, when we receive the word, we have to begin to meditate in the word. The reason the word does not really produce, because we just read the word casually as any other uh, other book, is a result now when you don't go to the process of the word, you didn't give the Holy Spirit time to take that word that was information to become a revelation so that you can act on it and can produce a result in your life. So we need to learn really to meditate in the word. In uh, Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, the Bible says, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that written it, then you shall make your way prosperous and have good success. So we all want success with God. We all want, you know, God do it for me. God bless me. But if we are going to see the way produce result in our lives, we have to be men and women. We meditate in the word. Meditate. It means that you, you see, to meditate, you don't have to read like the whole chapter. You can just take one verse. You say, my God, Jesus wept. 
So you think about Jesus wept. So you start looking at it for every corner, every side. You turn it to the left, turn it to the right. Yeah. It's like, you know, that word meditate is the word, you know, the same word you see when a cow is grazing during the day and after a while. You know, we used to have a, a small farm. I'll call it that day. We used to have goats and few things. Every time you go to open the goats or whatever animal you have to, to, to lead them out, they are always eating. Sometimes you wonder why, because they have to, they have different stomach. One stomach, they chew, they chew, and they bring it back, and they bring it back up again, they keep chewing. That's what meditate is all about. You, you listen to the word, you read the word, then you bring it up in your mind again, you keep meditating on it, med- thinking about it, and thinking about that, you know, Jesus healed them all. Jesus healed them all. Okay. He healed them all. He healed them all. So you start thinking about doing the day. So if he heals them all, so that all it can include me, it can include my family. So you see, you start, the Holy Spirit is going to start taking that word, start expanding it in your mind until it becomes a revelation before you know it. You know what? If he heals them all, then I'm supposed to be healed. I mean, before you know it, you start stepping into your, into your healing. So I wanted to understand that if we read the word, it's going to produce a result in our life. The three responses. The first response you need to, to meditate in the word and to speak the word. It's not only enough to meditate the word. After, after you finish the meditation of the word, start now speaking that word that you heard. That word you've been meditating on. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13, the Bible says this. And since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believe, therefore I spoke. We also believe and therefore speak. You see, when you believe, you must speak. When you believe, you must speak. So that thing you've been talking about, that thing you've been meditating on, it's time now for you to begin to speak them. Begin to prophesy, you know, I'm the head, no the tail. I'm above, no beneath. By the strap of Jesus, I heal. I'm healed. I don't walk in bitterness. I walk in the love of God. The joy of the Lord is my strength. And you know, you begin to speak what it, whatever be meditating on, you start speaking them. Because remember once again, what we spoke in the past, Proverbs 18, 21, death in life is under the power of the tongue. The man's life is near by the word of his mouth. So it begin to speak the word and you re- remember life and death is under the, the uh, power of the tongue. We begin to Create the life that we want to live with God by the word we are speaking. So not only meditate the word, you have, you and I have to speak the word. Second, uh, re- uh respond to, to the word of faith is that men and women are of the, of faith. As you begin to, to walk by faith and walk in the word, you have to be a man and woman who pray. We have to pray. In the book of Acts chapter 4 verse 31. The Bible says, and when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they spoke the word of God with boldness. Notice, you start by meditating the word. You start speaking the word. And when you begin to pray now, the the what prayer does, it empowers you so that not only you are speaking the word, but you are speaking the word with boldness. You are speaking the word with confidence. It means that it's no longer something you read, but you are confident that God, you have confident expectation that God will do what he say will do. It's one thing believing God will do it, but it's another thing also believing that God is going to carry out what he's going to do. He promised in his word. And most of the time we fall short because here we are speaking the word. Yes, we are meditating the word. We are not praying. As a result, now we are not giving the Holy Spirit the, the, the room or the environment to empower us so that we begin to arise in a place of greater uh, perspective in the word that we've been reading and the word we've been meditating on. We will become bold. You no longer, you're not only saying that God can heal, you know that God's going to heal you. You know, not only saying, you know, God gonna prove, God is a provider. You know, God gonna provide for you. How did you come to that place? It's the same thing with them. You find they, they came from a place of fear, speaking the word in a place of a limitation, a, 
the place where they're shaken. Now they're speaking the word in a place of boldness. Why? Because they prayed. Because they pray. I want to understand people. God, prayer answer us in a place of boldness. And when we begin to pray, because we are spending time with God, His nature is rubbing off on us. And when it's grab on, begin to rub off on us, we begin to also display the very nature of the God we've been spending time with. Remember, you know, when the disciples, they were with Jesus, even when Peter said, well, I don't know him, the, 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 the Sadducees, the, all those people, they say, no, 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 even the way you are talking, even your speech accuses you. Why? Because you spend time with Jesus. And you spend time with Jesus. The same with us. When you spend time with God, we have the same nature. We begin to walk in boldness. Just like our Father. So we begin to work in a place where we know God is going to provide for me. And the last thing, which is the response of our faith, I'm going fast because we have another program after this, is that when we listen to the word of faith, we have to obey. They, they say to respond to the word faith is that we have to obey the word. We have to obey the word. We have to obey the word. The Bible says we should not only be hearer of the word, but we must be doer of the word. This, this particular word that you are listening today, that we say, you know, when you're a man of faith, a woman of faith, you need to believe God. So what do you do? When you listen to it, begin to go now, begin to exercise. Oh, how do I believe God? No, you don't start believing God with big things. You just start with small things first. You just want to believe God. You know, I want to believe God for... Just with this headache. I'm having this migraine all the time. Uh, you keep saying, ah, oh, because it's summer. No, just begin to break it. Say, I believe you by the strap of Jesus, I was healed and I received my healing. So you say, you begin to hope, you know, you don't, you don't hope for, I don't know, God will give you, I don't know what. Just begin to hope, you know what, when my husband come from home today, we are not going to be having any fights. My husband, my wife, we're not going to be having a fight. If you having a fight, your husband, your wife, or your children, or whatever, just begin to start with small things. So what I'm trying to tell us is that faith without works is dead. So we need to begin to obey and respond to the word. And when we begin to respond to the word, that's the only way we can see a result. So obedience, obedience to the word. And obedience, so meaning acting on that particular word you are listening Look what the Bible says, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 8. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he would receive as an inheritance, and went out not knowing where he was going. Now, here is the thing. They gave him the word. He didn't know where he was going, but he just obeyed. And I tell you what, if we can just begin to obey God, we begin to see great things happen in our lives. So sometimes you are trying to analyze, you are trying to, you can never rationalize, analyze God. Just obey what the word says. If God says you forgive, don't say, well, apostle, you don't understand what she did to me. You see, you're walking again in disobedience. And when you walk in disobedience, that's not proper response to the word of faith. You will never see result. Just remember, God said, well, no, 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 forgiveness. Just forgive. He said, but you don't know about you don't know what it did to me because you are trying to respond with emotions. Forgiveness has nothing to do with your emotions. Forgiveness is a choice. You say, Father, I know I still really am struggling, but I choose to forgive this person. Because you say so. Now remember the word of God comes, comes with grace. And when you choose to do what God wants you to do, then you have access to the grace to do exactly what God wants you to do. But if you are waiting to, to, to feel like you want to do it, then you will never do it. So remember the third response of faith. We need to obey the word. In First uh, Samuel chapter uh, 15 verse 22, look what the Bible says. The Bible says, so Samuel said, has the Lord as great delight offerings and sacrifices, as in obeying the voice of the Lord, behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to heed than the fat of rams. To obey is better than sacrifice. You know, sometimes we go on, you go, now we are fasting for 40 days. 
You go on fasting and fasting. All these are sacrifices. But you know what? Obedience is better than sacrifice. Just do what God wants you to do. You know God wants you to, to go say sorry to your mom. You say, Apostle, my mom left me when I was five. You don't understand. Well, just go say sorry. Mom, I'm sorry. Then you say to yourself, it doesn't make sense. Listen, this has nothing to do you trying to rationalize once again. Just go say, Mom, I'm so sorry that I was as upset with you all these years for, for uh, abandoning me or whatever is the case. You know, it's always obeying what God says, regardless what I feel like, regardless what it fits with my culture or my lifestyle or whatever. We always obey the word of God. Glory to the living God. If we are going to see the hand of God, we need to be men and women of willing to obey. You know, this uh, reminds me of what the psalmist said. What did the psalmist say? The psalmist said, he said, Trust and obey. There is no other way to be happy in Jesus. You must trust and obey. You know, when... Uh, we were young, we just singing these songs. I remember as Baptist boys, we just sing it. Trust and obey. There is no other way to be happy in Jesus but trust and obey. He said, the older you get, you realize, you know what? If you are going to be happy with Jesus, just trust and obey. You can't try to understand. You can't trace him. You can't understand everything he's doing. You just well, you know what, Lord? And I want to just trust you and obey you. And if I want to look at everything, they don't make sense at all. But you know what? I will trust and I obey. People of God, as we come to the conclusion, I want you to know, faith believes all things. Faith hopes all things. And faith will endure all things. God bless you. Let's just pray. Father, this is your word. Now we come that you give us the grace. The grace, Father, to be able to just enjoy your word. To be able to obey your word. Give us the grace, Father, to do exactly what you want us to do. For the glory of your name. Father, we give you glory and praise. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs>